What is up? We're barking. It's after dark. And uh, I've seen a whole lot of Jake Roos here lately. Uh, this Jake, is our third Jake. show together in three days, in four days. So. Two, two Jakes and hats. Uh, yeah. I'm rocking the hoodie in true row fashion tonight. So yeah. I can't believe you're kind of not wearing one. Uh, yeah, it's a little my warm MVP in my house. Hoodie on of, of also too. So it yeah. got a little warmer today than I thought it was going to be. And um, I'm, dude, I don't know what it is about today. I'm out of gas, dude. I, I, um, I'm fresh out of meth. I have none left. So. <laughs> I'm I'm so tired. Come, hey, come up to my neighborhood. People can help you. I can yeah. promise. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, don't put that up your nose. That's that's real glass. <laughs> um, all right, uh, listen, um, we got uh, we got Mr. Chris Milton on with us tonight. The father of ballers himself, father of Chris Milton, I mean of Kendall Milton, and uh, we're excited to have him on. Uh, so let's get him on as quick as we possibly can. And uh, it, before we do that, obviously, we've got to talk about our awesome partner. GameTime.co, GameTime, interactive, intuitive. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can say to describe this app. It is incredible. Um, Palmer has it pulled up for us right now. SEC Championship, Georgia versus Alabama. Use GameTime to get your tickets because uh, use promo code DOGS and you can save 20% off of your first order. $20. Um, and, hey, listen, that, that knocks out any sort of fees, any sort of, you know, that's a discount you get there basically. Um, but as you can see, there are uh, there are tickets all over Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's going to be a big one, um, and we're excited about it. But, uh, you know, last-second tickets, get them way ahead of time. $20 off of your first order. Did I not say that? Uh, $20, I'm, not 20%. Yeah, that's not, yeah, not 20%. I'm sorry. Don't go buy it. Don't, don't go. Jake know, Rowe will get you 20% off your tickets. <laughs> don't go get two grand worth of tickets and expect to, you know, expect to go ahead and save 400 bucks on that. Yeah, sure. um, $20 off. I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, man, uh, we're excited about the SEC championship game. I know you are too. Get them now, get them last minute, get them whenever you want, but just get them from gametime.co. Download that app right now. It's worth it. And uh, smooth, easy. It, it'll work for you. I, I do promise. All right, let's bring our man on, Chris Milton, father of ballers himself. What's up, Chris? Fellas? What's up, fellas? How you guys doing? We're good, good man. Looks like you are in transit. Hey, yeah, don't hey, don't judge me. I'm I'm riding dirty, but I'm all right. <laughs> don't, don't, ju don't judge me. Don't judge me. We got to get you a ring light up, and you know, you know, it's you know, it's crazy daylight savings when when just both coasts are just dark as all get out already, and it's only eight thirty on our end of the world. Man, yeah, this is this is crazy out here, man. But, it, I, hey, uh, but you know what? It's all good. We, I, hey, I, we, we're gonna make it happen. Just as long as I can get get to where I'm going, that's all. I think I think this may be the first one of these that we've done where somebody was uh, in transit to somewhere else. I'll be honest with you. Most, most of our people, most of our people are pretty stationary. Uh, but Chris, you, you're a guy. You're you're always you're you're a guy who's always in motion. So that's not that should be a huge surprise to most people. Exactly, man. I keep it moving. Yeah, and honestly. I, I had this joke cooked up that no matter how you came on, I was going to be like, hey, man, listen, put your bicep down. We can't see your face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, no matter what, you was coming out the gate with it, huh? I was. I was. But then now, you know, you, you're driving, so I had to bring that up I, first. I still throw it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, listen, man, we really appreciate you joining us and everything. And, and there's – we talked about this, Roos and I did, uh, during the game on Saturday – um, Roos was like, man, what a hell of a guest to get after Saturday. Um, Kendall, nine carries. Uh, what, what did it end up being, 127? Yeah, um, 127. 127, one catch for 12 yards, which I thought was maybe his best play of the day, to be honest with you. That was such a big play at a big moment. Yeah. Um, what was it? You know, obviously we'll talk about kind of what Kendall's reaction was after the game, but what was it like for you, man, watching all that happen and on, on senior day? You know, it, it already started off emotional, man. Um, just once, once we got to the tailgate and got got that got got that first shot of fireball in me, man. The, the emotions start going on, and so going into the game, I, you know, the thing is, I know I know Kendall's talent. I know Kendall's there for a reason, but I also know that injuries have kind of kind of messed it up. If, if that if that if that makes sense, you know, so. You know, I, I know he's going to show up. I know he was feeling good, but going out there, playing the way he played, I, I'm not going to lie. I was taking it in just like you guys. And just like you said, off of that pass and making the first person miss and then kind of spinning and, 
you know, I was while I was rewatching re the play, and I said, dude, if you'd have been able to put that plant foot on the ground, you'd have took them dudes into the end zone. So it was just good. It was good seeing him get after it, man. I was excited, just like you guys were, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, Chris, I, I, I wanted to ask you, like you said, there have been some injuries over the course of time, and, and obviously – uh, that's just frustrating and that's just the nature of life i mean really more than anything but how what was what was the emotional reaction i guess like for kindle um and you uh you know following a performance like that just to be able to kind of do that on that stage on that day in that moment well if you've really been following kindle man and you know as he goes through the you know through the dealing with the injuries and the mental and emotional aspect of it. In addition to being, you know, being a family and being his resource, you see he leans on his faith a lot. And he really trusts God, man. Like, many, I wish at that age, shit, I wish at this age, I could say that I was that strong in the faith as he demonstrates. So to see him go out there, man, to see this is his last home game at Sanford, to see that, you know, this countdown is truly starting to, to tick, and he really solidified at home why he chose to come to Georgia. And I really believe that was a statement game for him. And so that 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 meant the world for him to have that career game. That, and that's what I told him. I said, dude, you will forever remember your senior night, your senior game in college. Forever. You will forever remember that. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, man. And, I mean, as, that was the thing that kind of kept popping up to me as I kept kind of writing about it and recapping the game is – you know, for him, for Dejan, you know, for for um, you know, for even those young guys that got in there late, um, you know, and and I we're going to talk about the running back room here in here in a little bit, I'm sure, but uh, I'm sure it was you know just incredibly memory uh, mem memorable. Um, why don't we go ahead and get into that running back room because you and I have traded some texts about this before, and you know, obviously Dell McGee has been has been you know engineering that thing since he you know since Kirby took over, um, he's a fixture there. Um, you've had guys come, you've had guys go, but you know, you and I were talking about this. I think it was, yeah, honestly, I think it was in 2020, 2021, prior to 2021, maybe, um, the bond there, the kind of watching each other get their, you know, get theirs and wait their time. Um, you know, James Cook, Zamir White, Kenny McIntosh, Ken, you know, Kendall being a part of it for all four years in some way. What what is that? What is it like being around those guys and and the you know the what you've told me before the unselfish nature of it all. They those dudes are legitimately rooting for each other, man. Um, you know us as adults, right? You go inside the workforce, and when somebody gets the promotion that you wanted, man, you know people people get nasty, right? People get jealous, they get envious, and they try to. They try to thwart somebody else's growth because it doesn't seem like theirs is coming. Whereas these young men, they look at it and say, you know what? We all here for the same thing. We all here to support each other. So we all need to win together. That's why, man, when you, you know, even though Kendall had to play behind those dudes in the last, you know, the last years, you never see him not celebrate any one of their success, right? Even right now, while he was dealing with his injuries and maybe he couldn't go out there like he wanted to or whatever the case may be. When those other boys were in the game, he was celebrating them, man. And that's the whole thing. This this stuff is bigger than the game. You know, they 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 call themselves brothers, not teammates, not, not I share a room with them. Like, those are brothers. So that really lets you know how thick that bond is for those dudes. Yeah, you know, and Chris, I wanted to ask you that as somebody who's kind of been an observer of this through the recruiting process, through watching your son go through it, you know, as a parent, uh, putting your kid into this Georgia program and now seeing it, excuse me, in fruition all these years, what's it been like, man? Um, you know, what's it like to see what Georgia does from that aspect of creating that bond and that brotherhood? You know, I think it's something special, and I really think that speaks to the leadership that Kirby and and his team creates. Um, I think that the expectation is set when you come in that, you know, wait your turn. I mean, and I, and that, I think that's clear across the board. But uh, the amount of team bonding things that they do, the, the way they hold each other accountable, starting from the leadership and that sort of thing, I really do think it's special. And I think that speaks to the success that the Georgia Bulldogs have 
um, when you look at them compared to other programs. I mean, they're able to, to achieve things on and off the field that others can't because they focused on each other first. And I think that's where it starts, honestly. You focus on each other. You got to play for each other, man. You can't go out there and play for yourself. You see most most teams, you know, they do all that talking in the media and and all that other crap. But when they get on the field, them boys playing for themselves, man. And you, and you see it. Look at the difference in the way Georgia celebrate a play versus the way most other teams celebrate a play. You, you get what I'm saying? Like like on Kendall's, touch, Kendall's touchdown, when you watch it, Look at the way the linemen are celebrating, man, because they they know that, you know, that they were involved in that and, and they had a part in that. And, and that's they, that's little bro coming in. Like, it's I don't know. It's like I said, it's just special to watch it all come come together. It's it's funny. You meant it's funny you mentioned that because we got a comment from uh, the YouTube right now from famous J1. He says, Kendall got the O-line wings in the national championship game. And if that's not a lasting lifelong memory, I don't know what is. <laughs> right, and and that's the first the first thing. Hey, the first thing he did was go get him wings, man. You heard him in this in this in this news conference. He told the boys, "Hey, man, listen, y'all get me to a hundred. Y'all get me to a hundred. I got dinner for you." So, <laughs> hey, and he, and, and he, hey, and he, and if you know Kendall, Kendall making good on that, you know. So that's what it's about, man. That's funny, dude. I'll be honest with you. Um, I had to make my way down to the field after the national championship game to try and film the celebration or whatever. I ended up going through some of those cabanas down there. There's a lot of people needed to eat some wings down there because they had the munchies. Um, there was there was some there was some uh, there was some fires started down there to burn some stuff. I know that. Um, right, there yeah, was the, yeah. a lot of sweet leaf being burnt down that way. Um, hey, hey, but, well, hey, that's California. That's that California love, my guy. It is. It is. Hey, listen. There's no better time to talk about it. Obviously, it was a big night for the state of California. Kendall kind of opened up the floodgates. It seemed like a little bit from the state for Georgia, and another cat from up that way. Um, Brock Bowers comes back after two games. What the hell's up with that, man? What'd you think about that? Have we lost him? It looks like he's in a tunnel. Oh man. All right. We hope he's okay. All right. Well, well <laughs> I thought Brock Bowers was hell, just if oh, you're asking. Yeah. Um uh, Brock Bowers then Brock Bowers is hell, don't Brock they? Brock Bowers is hell, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh yeah, I figured I'd ask him about that because I know uh, I know as much as anything, uh, Chris, and hey, there he is. We got him back, I do believe. There we hey, go. Chris, what's going on? With, did we lose you in a tunnel or what? My, my bad, bro. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. I, I got all my bars. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I, what I was saying was uh, Kendall kind of opened up a floodgate. for the. Well, there he goes again. <laughs> We won't give up on this. I promise. <laughs> we don't. This is just not in our DNA. There he is. There all right. We get, all right. So uh, I was I was bringing it up to you. Kendall kind of opened the floodgates from the state of California, and um, you know Brock comes the next year. Uh, what the hell's up with him just missing two games after that ankle surgery? Right, man? What did you think about that? Yeah. Can you hear me? I'm a hold. On, I'm gonna pull over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, th this is we're doing this is it live, time. folks. This is what live. This is live podcasting, and this is it. And this is what it is. Hold on, this is on. uh this is on brand for Bark After Dark, Chris. Don't worry <laughs> about it, dude. Are we? Uh, all right. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna give him a second. Yeah, we're. we're I, I feel like we're nearing a safe space. We can't just let dead air roll here. We oh, yeah, yeah, we can. Why can't we? <laughs> because we got people tuning in the podcast. They're listening. They can't just see Okay, yeah, I guess not. I guess not. You're right. You're right about that. <laughs> this is, remember when we hosted the Bill Shank show that one time? Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> Never been so stressed out in my life. What a what a what an experience. What an incredible experience. We got you now, Chris. Maybe. Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously, um, man, the more I think about that whole Brock Bowers thing, um, do you know, like, since since we watched him on the field Saturday, yeah. do you know that I have heard um, – I've heard that he actually practiced the week before. 
uh, he was kind of rolling in practice a little bit, like the week before that, like the, the like Thursday or something like that. It's just insane. No, it's ridiculous, um, man. I mean, yeah, it's it's not even really. I don't know. It's unfathomable to some degree, right? Yeah. I mean, you remember? I mean, it was like I was talking to somebody about uh, Nick Chubb and the ACL and all that, man. Like, you remember when that was like an unovercomable injury where they were just like trying to like make it so you could walk. Right. Yep. Hey, Chris, we got you now. There we go. Hey, hold on. I don't know what the heck can happen to this thing. Hold on, you guys. <laughs> it, hey, looks like, it looks like things are going okay, though. Yeah, we, we just appreciate the effort very much. Yes, absolutely. So, what were you saying? You're saying about the Nick Chubb thing? Oh, I mean, like, you know, it, how far have we come when a guy can come back from an injury like that and be productive within, you know, two and a half, three weeks, um, as opposed to, you know, it was it used to be a six week timeline, four to six, roughly. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, apparently his mom, his that mom posted about, at one point that he was told from the jump three to four. Yeah, and what I'm saying is about, like, I guess medical science at large, right? The idea of, like, yeah. you know, 20 years ago, if a guy got an ACL tear, that was the end of his playing career. And then you were just, you were really trying to hope hope that he could live a normal life if you could do a repair on his leg. Right, yeah. Now guys are coming back in eight months from that uh, that injury. Yeah, and and doing the Marshawn Lynch hit up in the face. <laughs> yeah exactly absolutely um hopefully we can get chris back in here uh one of the best dudes uh he's he's doing everything on his end i can yeah. you to make this happen there we go all right i'm back i'm back I'm all right. over. Y'all made me pull over. <laughs> well hey man we we do appreciate that um all right what i was asking you was it you know kendall obviously opened up that pipeline to california brock comes in the next year um and then, I mean, what the hell's up with him coming back after only missing two games? What did you think about all that? That that was wild to me. Hey, Brock, hey, Brock is a beast, man. And and Brock is different. And you hear all the boys talk about Brock being different. All of them talk about Brock being different, man. So um I'm not I'm not surprised, but you also have to you also have to ask yourself, why would the family make a decision to have surgery rather than let it heal on its own right if it right. wasn't going to, if it wasn't going to be advantageous so you know sometimes sometimes the body will heal quicker by going through that trauma than it will you know going through you know you get what i'm saying sure yeah i just so, you know we, we had seen a couple it was just crazy because you know hey listen man um marius mims is a freak too you know he had the same right. surgery and you know, it, it, it took a little longer. And I know he's a bigger dude. I know everybody's different. But I just – I don't know, man. The more I think about it, the more I'm just kind of like, you know, coming back at that point, that quick, playing that many snaps, I'm, I was just kind of blown away by it. But here's the thing, though. Here's the other side, and I think Kendo actually spoke to this. If you want to know what this means to those boys, yeah, Brock did not have to come back. Sure. Yeah. Right. Brock could have Brock been like, you know what, y'all, hey, I appreciate it. I'm good and I'm out if that's what he chose to do, but they have a bond, man. And so, you know, he, 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 he felt that he wanted to accomplish something with his, with his brothers, man. So he, he made the sacrifice, put his body through it. And here we go, here we go to finish this movie. And, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, Jake kind of touched on it. Um, Chris, uh, the idea of Kendall kind of opening those floodgates you know, from the West Coast for Georgia. Kendall's been a, a huge part of that. Uh, then you've got guys like Ernest Green, Brock Bowers, uh, JT Daniels came from out West as well. Um, you know, there's a number of these guys, Roderick Robinson as well. You know what? Um, hey, so I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some intel. Yeah. So if, if you remember when, intel. if you remember when Brock came in, that yeah. was COVID, that was COVID, right? They didn't, yeah. they didn't have, they didn't have visits. They didn't have any of that, right? So Brock's first time on campus was after he committed and signed. So his first day on campus was his first day, his first day when he was reporting to school. 
Why? Because because we actually we actually had a couple hour conversation with him and his family and told him the benefits and advantages of coming to Georgia. We actually had a conversation with the Bowers family and they actually chose Georgia on our word. And and that was what I was going to ask you was the idea of if you're if you're sending your son across the country. I mean, you guys were one of the early adopters of this in the Kirby Smart era. What is the pitch that you give to somebody uh, who wants to who is considering doing that? Because obviously it's a large cultural change. It's a large movement. You know, there's a homesickness factor to all of this. How do you kind of from a football perspective, from a team life perspective, from a family perspective, what makes Georgia a, a place that kids from California can go and not only go, but thrive? I mean, I think like, like, like Suge Knight said, if you want to go somewhere where the producer ain't all in your videos and you want to, <laughs> 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 you got, you got to go to Georgia. Now I'm just playing. I think the biggest, the, the biggest thing was seeing the benefit of coming to Georgia and how it plays for the long game. Um, that 40 year plan that every kid talks about, it starts with your decision of where you're going to school. Um, we talked about the atmosphere. We talked about just the Kirby smart, his culture um, from what we've seen to this point, you know, and how he's, how, how he welcomed us in, you know, and we had to basically show him through, through, through us, told him what campus was like, the resources that, that the kids have and, and all of that. So, that was the that was really the selling point to let to let them know how we saw Georgia in our eyes from a from a parent's perspective, sending our kid across the country and a lot of the concerns, see, a lot of the concerns that they would have had, we had and were able to kind of get firsthand information to be able to, you know, counter that or feel better about that. So we were able to truly share our opinion. So the greatest thing about it is. The, the, the Bowers family trusted us. They trusted our word. They trusted our experiences to take it as credible. It's amazing. It's, and that's yeah. such a cool story. And that's what was needed during that time, too. I mean, there, there was no other way. I mean, well, I can't use visit anywhere else either and getting, right. you know, but but you guys were there, you know, and, and could kind of speak to that whole like, hey, listen, it's it's hell getting there. You know, it's it's a six hour. It's six hours basically with the time change, even with a flight. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, you were able to kind of show the benefits of everything that was there. And, you know, that's, that's just huge. And it's a huge part of a, you know, a big story of, of these kids that, um, both them, I mean, they, they got a chance to win three national championships together and what a, what a, you know, what a conversation that would have, you know, ultimately turned out to be for this university and in the landscape of college football in general. Um, years ago, you and I spoke and it doesn't seem like it's been that long ago, to be honest with you. I think it was in 2019. Um, but we talked about Kendall and when I asked you, I remember, when did you know? And I, and I love this story. It's one of my favorite stories because it's not like, it's not one of those like, oh man, I saw him, you know, jump over a kid or I saw him, you know, break 45 tackles and, and score in a peewee game. You told me when you knew Kendall was going to be a, a really good football player. And it's one of my favorites, Heather, because of the way you, because of the way you saw it and and what it was that he did. Well, I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, everybody asked that question, like, when did you know? Like, you know, as if we saw him in youth football or or even high school. Um, I I knew Kendall was good and um I knew he was talented. And I think the only thing, and, and this is gonna sound like BS, but hopefully you know I don't BS, I don't care. The biggest thing for us, it was like, hey man. Hey, get an education out of this, bro. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. figure out figure out where you can go to school, bro. Get your education out of it. And so, like, when that first offer came in in eighth grade, January first of his eighth grade year, it was like, dang, okay, okay, you can you can do this. But when he chose to go to Georgia, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, okay, that's cool, that's cool. But in the back of my mind, because on TV, I see. Those men, that's what I see. I see those big old dudes. I see the Jordan Davises and the Van Prans and the and the and the Mims. Like I see these big old dudes, but then when I see Kendall, I don't say and I don't see the same Kendall that you guys see. I still see my little dude. You right. know what I mean? My my I see my son. That's what I see. So 
although I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, hey, all right, let's go. In my mind, I'm like, dude, can this dude play in the SEC? And it was, it was, it was the 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 home visit with McGee and um, Coach Smart. We were sitting at the dining room table and we were just talking and just laughing and whatever the case may be. And I was like, hey, let me ask you a serious question. I said, you really think Kendall can play at this level? And McGee just kind of looked at me and started laughing. He was like, you have no idea. And I'm like, evidently I don't because I'm being dead serious. He was like, yeah, he'll be fine. That's <laughs> McGee's favorite line right there. He'll be fine. Yeah. And I think for me, it wasn't until um, Tennessee. I think that's the game, Tennessee, when yeah. he broke like those nine tackles. I was like, okay, game mode. Then he is where he's supposed to be. So you want to know when I, <clears throat> when I knew he could play? <clears throat> Freshman year at, at Georgia. Hold on a second. <coughs> That's when I knew he could play. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. No, rightfully so. Rightfully so. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier in the show, Chris, and and you know the the injury aspect of things. From a from a just watching that as a parent and and from listening to Kendall, how frustrating has that been? Because you know, obviously, you know, everybody has been. Uh, you know, that, you know, wanting wanting Kendall to perform to his top level his entire career for him personally, though. And as you and as you as a father, how tough has that been? So if you if you followed us um, during this time frame, <clears throat> specifically me, I guess you would say. You see, I ride for my dudes like I ride for my dudes. Um, in, in my mind, I'm going to help them through anything. I'm going to help them solve problems. I'm going to help them solve issues. Maybe too much sometimes, but, hey, I'm dad, so it is what it is. Once he – seeing him get hurt, bro, it ain't it ain't nothing I can do. There's nothing that I can do. Um, the worst feeling in the world, bro, is seeing that damn tent go up on the sideline. That's the worst, that tent go up on the sideline. And at that point – that true, true dad kicks in. You get what I'm saying? And the big, I think the thing is, I already know how he's feeling. And I know how I'm feeling. But at the point, how I'm feeling means absolutely nothing. I have to check my emotions and 100% let him see me be strong for him. So you want to know what it feel like? It's the worst feeling in the world because your kid is hurt and you can't do nothing about it. That's hard. That's hard. So sure. then, then, and then, so then I'm going to speak on the elephant in the room. Then you have those idiots, and I hope they watch him, those idiots that get on social media to talk about, oh, he always hurt it. He this and he that. Like he made a conscious decision that I'm going to spring my MCL. Like right. he made a conscious yeah. decision. And that he's the kind of stuff. Idiots. He's frozen. Id idiots, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we weren't in disagreement. Both of you, both you and I were nodding along. We were like, hurt my neck nodding. Yeah. <laughs> Not as so hard I hurt my neck. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's just 100%, man. And, 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 we got you back. Yeah, yeah. He was he yeah. was calling me on Facetime. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. You, you okay. were you were saying idiots, and we were agreeing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You get those you get those people who get on there, man. And, and I don't know, man. I've never I've never been I've never been a big fan of anything. If that makes sense, I've never followed a team to that to where I was just. Also not a fan of the idiots. Signal. <clears throat> like he's in the so, house. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Yeah. yeah. You can hear me? Yeah, we got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So it's new for me, man. So I'm trying to understand how people can proclaim their fandom and their love and all of this for your athletes, but yet 
the moment that the athlete faces adversity, you can publicly come on and talk trash. I just don't get that, man. That's the, that's yeah. something that I can never, ever subscribe to. I can't subscribe to that, man. If I ride with you, if I ride with you, I'm a ride with you, bro. If you hurt, I'm hurt. At that time, forget everything else, man, because I care about you. But these idiots, man, the folks that say that, they don't give a damn about these athletes, man. And the crazy thing about it is, again, I'll say it out loud. 98% of them folks never even stepped foot on a Georgia campus, man. Never even yeah. stepped foot on the Georgia campus, but they the one that criticized these boys the most. That's that's the part that bothers me. Yeah, it is frustrating. And I'm glad you uh I'm glad you got an opportunity to say that, man. I really am because it's uh it's frustrating for us too, you know, because it's a real thing. It I is. mean, it's you a know, very I, real thing. I've never understood the whole idea of uh of of I don't know, of of getting after somebody for something you couldn't do if you were on your healthiest day. You know, it's just yeah. it's a tough game. And and I've told people many times I've covered a lot of Georgia seasons and just standing out there in that Georgia heat for 20 minutes on that first day of preseason camp, um, watching them just get after it in helmets and practice 100 miles an hour like you just do not understand um, kind of what it takes. Just if a kid can get through a preseason camp at Georgia, they've got all my – one, they've got all my respect because that it's just that tough. <laughs> right. Um, right. Hey, we, right. uh, we're going to let you get on your way here in just a second. We got one question each that we got, we both ask everybody, and mine is simple. Yeah, you you uh my, mine is always simple. I ask it to everybody. You've you've you have you have passed away and but you get a chance to send your own self off. You get a chance to to organize how you get to go out as far as your service or whatever, who gets to eulogize you or whatever, who who is performing, singing, um, you know, poem, it doesn't matter who is who is speaking the day that Chris Milton got dies if you got anything to do with it. Dead or alive, they don't have to be anybody. You know what? I'm gonna tell you what's crazy about that, and actually why it gave me goosebumps. One of my one of my buddies died a couple of years ago. He had um, brain cancer, and he he fought it for several years, and um, he ended up passing away. One of Kendall's um, old teammates, his, his his dad. So I was actually at his funeral, and it was big, man. He had a lot of stars there and that type of stuff, man. But I remember sitting there seeing people cry and this and this and that while I was there. While I'm crying, I text one of my buddies. I said, bro, check this out. If I go before you, I, the, the one thing that I want you to do is eulogize and conduct my funeral. I don't want people sitting here crying. I don't want them sitting here boohooing. I want to go out the way that my close friends know me, and that's cracking jokes and everything. And his name is Andre Covington. He's a professional comedian. He he runs the top radio uh, morning show in here in Central California. If you Google him, Andre Covington, he's a big time comedian, performs overseas for the troops and everything. I told him, I want you to conduct my funeral. And I want it to be more of a roast. I want you to, I want you to talk the, crazy the same way you would talk to me if I was there, because that's what will resonate with people. So it's just interesting that you asked me that because I actually reached out to my buddy and asked him to do that for me. That's awesome. That's great. I, I can't think of a better way to go out. I, I think, I think you're talking with two individuals that would like the same thing. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, I'm going to do that at Jake Rose funeral because he's going yeah. to <laughs> Cause, <laughs> Cause I probably will <laughs> die before him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So Chris, my question that I asked to everybody and you've traveled a lot, man, you've, uh, you've been one of the most faithful dog supporters, but you've also just traveled a lot even before uh, that. And aside from that, uh, my question for you is, what is the worst hotel room that you have ever stayed in in your life? <laughs> it was so growing up every year, every year we used to take a trip to uh, across country. We used to leave the Bay Area, um, our Fairfield, where we lived uh, in California and drive cross country to either the Alabama or Louisiana. And my mom, my mom, her name is Linda. OK, Linda Milton. And I remember one year we were driving cross country and we were trying to find a hotel to stay at along the way. And we saw a hotel and it was called the uh, Hotel Linda. That's what it was called. So I remember we stopped at that hotel. 
We didn't even make it through the night. We, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even we didn't even make it through the night. That was the worst hotel. That made that made um that made the Motel Six look like the 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 the, the JW Marriott. <laughs> it, it was it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> how many? Uh, yeah. So you got to tell me how many times has that got brought up since, like over the years? Okay, a couple times. A couple. Okay. Couple, sometimes, sometimes it'll it'll be in a, it'll be relevant in a conversation, and we'll bring it up, and we'll my, we'll give my, moms we'll give moms them a run for their money on it. No, my, my my theory is my theory is nobody ever forgets the worst hotel room they ever stayed in. It's it, it's nah, it's just burned it's burned into your brain. No, a hundred a hundred percent, man. And you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 older now, so we didn't got bougie a little bit. So it's only certain hotels that we gonna stay in. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, hey, man, I'm, I'm not going to hotel Linda anytime soon, huh? Hey. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not standing in a hotel room that you got to enter from the outside. No, no. Yeah. There you go. I need. I need to go through a corridor to get to my room. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Ding. Need to be able to hear that, uh, hear that elevator uh, get you there. Yeah. Sure. Stay on a high floor, <laughs> dude. Hey, we appreciate you so much. Um, you. You. Uh, your effort in having doing this podcast or this uh, show with us tonight. I was reminiscent of T Kendall's effort on that eight-yard touchdown run. Uh, you did not give up. You just kept bowling through stuff to stay on with it, so we appreciate it. No, hey, it's all good, man. I appreciate the support, man. I appreciate the love, man, and what you guys are doing. Give, honestly, giving parents like me a platform to come on, because I don't think people understand truly what it is like to be a parent of this. Yeah. It's an emotional roller, it's an emotional roller coaster. In the games, it's an emotional roller coaster. It was honestly, it was damn near more fun on Friday nights being, yeah. being in the stadium than it is here because now it's business, man. It's business. Yes, it's cool to see him out there. Yes, it is. But it's a job audition, like a literal job audition every freaking Saturday, bro. So people don't understand that, man. So I, I really, I, I thank you guys for giving this platform to where we can be transparent and really just educate people. These are our kids, these are our babies. Be responsible, man. That's all. Be responsible when you talk about people's kids. That's all. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Thank you Absolutely. so much for coming thank on. You, all right. Thank y'all, man. And go dogs. <laughs> See you, dude. That was, I mean, dude, he powered through, what man. Did you expect? What did you expect? I mean, it was as good as you expected, I think, probably. Yeah, no, he's he's fun. You knew, you knew fun. what you were going to get. You knew it was going to be awesome when you got crazy. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was going to have a lot of energy. Uh, I will say this, though. Um, I, I don't know. I think he kind of thought I meant later on. Uh, I didn't want to push the point a little bit because I was worried we'd lose him again um, at, at any moment because, um, you know, it's just – technology and what but uh he told me this story years ago i've never forgotten it and it was just kind of about how he knew kendall was gonna play football he said you know when kendall was young he didn't really have that killer instinct in him he didn't really like contact a whole lot he said all of a sudden one one day um they're playing a game and he hadn't really thought about it in a while and this kid broke out a long run and he's on the other team and he's just watching the kid run down the sideline all of a sudden he just sees kendall at an angle, just fly out of nowhere and tackle the kid at the one yard line, made him fumble, um, and just saw that effort. And he was kind of like, "Man, I, I from that day on, I was like, I think, I think I got a competitor here." Um, and he's right, um, he's absolutely right. And um, you know, I'm not so sure Georgia fans have seen the best of what Kendall Milton's got um, just no. yet. I think, yeah. uh, I think they may have. They've, they've had him around for four years, but I think they might get Saturday. they might get four or five more games to kind of figure out just how good he is. Yep. Uh, so, what's uh? Hey, what's been on your mind? What you got? What you got for me tonight? All right. What are we? Are we jaking off? We're jaking off. <laughs> oh boy, man! I have, I've got the lotion ready. Oh uh, geez. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get into it. Uh, so uh, we're not going to do this show next Monday night, right? That's right. We are not. Yeah, hey, and and one more thing before we jump into this. One more thing yeah. before we jump in. I got a shout out, my man Mickey Braddy. Okay, from South Georgia, from down around, from down in Pearson. Uh, ran into my parents the other day. I had a chance to talk to him on the phone. He's a loyal listener to Bark After Dark. Said he loves the show. Mickey, we love you for listening. We love everybody in the comments as well. Don't get me wrong. Rock and roll. But uh, Mickey, we love you, dude. We appreciate you listening to us. I just wanted to shout you out real quick. No, absolutely, absolutely. 
So we're taking next Monday off, just so people are aware. It's Thanksgiving week. I'm going to go down to my dad's. It's his birthday. Um, and Rose going to, I don't know, who knows what you do. I'm going, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going out West looking for sister wives in Utah. <laughs> oh boy. I, yeah. I didn't know if you were just going to like cruise by Palmer's and have some pizza rolls on Thanksgiving. Or no, something. no. Uh, pa Palmer's going to be in Nashville. He's going to be eating <laughs> Nashville hot chicken for, uh, apparently he's never had Nashville hot chicken. Um, he's what? from Nashville. Yeah. Is that, does, does that surprise you with Palmer? No, <laughs> no, not with Palmer. <laughs> what are you talking about? You have said you've never had Nashville hot chicken. Yes, I have. Oh, would you, maybe you said you didn't like Nashville hot chicken. No, that's not true. You said something. Yeah, you did. Don't lie. <laughs> Palmer doesn't here. like seasoning on his food. Palmer's going to eat at a um, steakhouse. That's, steak. that's what. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we're taking Thanksgiving week off. What I'm asking is, I don't know where you're going for, for Thanksgiving, and that doesn't really matter to me. But what's what's on your plate if you get to choose when it's Thanksgiving Day? Oh, man, what, what, how you how you building the plate? Yeah. Um. So, do, can I get some dimensions on this plate? But let's let's assume it's one of those big, the big fat wide ones. You yeah, know one of like eighteen inches. Oval, the yeah. oval shaped uh, chinette, I believe, is where that thing is. Yeah. So, um, I'm a turkey and a ham guy. I do like a little dark meat turkey. Um, you know, I, I I'm I'm honestly cool to eat, to eat a turkey quarter turkey leg quarter um thigh and uh leg it's a lot of meat but i'll take it down and i love ham I, dude I, I just love the good and i'm not like a no, sweet no, no, wait, wait, we're talking ham here i'm not a sweet okay. ham guy oh oh I, I like it i like it it's fine but those lee hams those lee you, smoked you hams smoke, you, get, you want the smoked the smoked ham yeah i love a good smoked ham man good smoked ham one of my favorite things to do is to take that smoked ham and get it sliced fairly thin you know kind of like that and then uh, I make, I, I use that as kind of like a tortilla, and I throw some dressing with some giblet gravy in there, and I, I wrap use it up as a tortilla. Is probably yeah. the baddest thing you've ever said. Yeah, <laughs> use the ham as a tortilla. Throw some cornbread dressing in there with some uh, sure. with some giblet gravy. Oh, brother! Are you a cranberry sauce guy? No, I'm not a cranberry sauce guy. Uh, really? Uh, homemade in cranberry any sauce in any fashion? I like homemade cranberry sauce. Okay. Okay. Um, but honestly, it just kind of takes up room on my plate. Um, okay. So I, you know, little little turkey, little ham, tons of cornbread dressing, and I and I make it on my own now. I love it um, with the gravy, um, mashed potatoes, little macaroni and cheese. Um, cousin Kathy Browning from down in Pearson, Georgia, she makes the finest collard greens that have ever been made. Uh, I believe she puts a little either maple or Cairo syrup in them to kind of. To, to kind of give them a texture a little bit and it's Why delicious. Both? Why not both? <clears throat> I know, right? Um, put a lot of those on the plate. Uh, deviled eggs, brother. Deviled eggs on top of deviled eggs on top. That that's one of those though that like before the meal starts, you're just yeah. like, just like a couple of those. Yeah, that's that, 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 those are more. those are stand in line apps. Absolutely. Those sure. are stand in line apps. <laughs> and like our man Noah Sims, it's like gout. Yeah, 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 sure. You just it's it, there's not you're not really biting, you're just it's like intaking the deviled egg. Yeah. There's no <laughs> chewing involved, really. You're just uh yeah. yeah. My favorite thing though is when uh when somebody brings uh somebody brings the deviled eggs and, and there's like a literal like professional deviled egg holder. Oh yeah, like just yeah, like the, seven the cake pan. pan. It's the cake yeah. pan with it's the, like, it's got the cake cover on it. Yeah, I got I got just stacks, you know, just 40 deviled eggs in there. It's just unbelievable. And I'm like, well, I, I will say this though. If you're that person and you own that thing, that's the person I want the deviled eggs from. I've never seen somebody with mid deviled eggs bringing that thing to the, the party. Dude, think about it. That's somebody who's like, I need to make a lot of deviled eggs. People are going to want my deviled eggs. I will also say this. I've eaten some really shitty deviled eggs. They were still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I mean, I like <laughs> Somebody who doesn't normally make the deviled eggs, I'm like, oh, a deviled egg. Deviled eggs are kind of like golf. It's like a, the worst day playing golf is a better day doing anything else. Yeah, you know, it's, it's better than any do it better than a day of doing anything else. Well, worst deviled egg is still pretty damn good. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so no, uh, no, 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 uh, no sweet potatoes. No, I hate uh, sweet potatoes. I mean, I, I just don't like sweet potatoes. I can't do them. Oh, okay. Um, okay. yeah, no sweet potatoes. Um, you know, we're big, we're big in, uh, in my family. We always grow our, we always have our own garden that we bring in every year. 
and uh, a lot of um like uh not dried out but like green black eyed peas oh, yeah. um you know they put up blanch them and put them up cook them with uh ham hocks and stuff like that and butter beans white butter beans and so uh what you know a, what about a bread option like a roll of some sort uh, no, no no cornbread dressing um well, i mean obviously sure not, not a not a big bread guy to buffet uh like that um only when I'm starving at a steakhouse. You're trying, you're trying to beat the system. You're, you're not trying to fill up on the cheap. Uh, yeah. And honestly, you know, the thing about it is I run into it every year. It's really an all you can carry type of uh, type of situation. Um, and, uh, you know, hey, listen, I put on a show. I will put on an absolute just spectacle of, you know. <laughs> Gluttony. Yeah, of absolute <laughs> gluttony. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is, and, and I've got to figure this out because I think it's probably going to put me in an early grave. I got to slow down. I got to, I, 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 I got to quit eating like it's just going to run from me. Not at Thanksgiving. Yeah, I do it, man. I just, I just smash it because I'm so hungry. Um, but uh, yeah, but now, do you subscribe to that whole the, the whole Southern idea of like you starve yourself until the meal? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but you're not really though, because there's like, you know, probably somebody brought a little Chex Mix or they got the deviled eggs out early or, you know, I, I'm the. You know. What usually happens? Somebody makes a big pot of chicken and dumplings, and you know, like, oh my first, god, somebody will make a big pot of chicken and dumplings. Well, and what then, an appetizer! And then, and, well, no, that's not an appetizer. It's for the thing. But I'm over there with a fork, like looking around, <laughs> like poking one out, and, you know. Getting my getting my uh, blood sugar, you know, jacked up, you know, tr challenging diabetes with just a big old ball of cooked I'm flour. Going, I'm going to my dad's this year uh, for Thanksgiving. It's his birthday on Thanksgiving, um, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, but also, too, that means that I'm getting oyster dressing this year. No, I love is, it. Which, I love yeah, it. It's a really tremendous dish. My it granny, is. my granny's dressing is my favorite in the world now, and that's I get that when I stay home. Going to my dad's, the oyster dressing, very, very good, very good. But that'll be a nice change this year, I think. Just keep talking about what you like about Thanksgiving because I don't have anything better to ask than this. No, come on, come on, come on. I don't have anything better to ask than let's talk about Thanksgiving food, man. Oh, dude. I mean, so I'm a big like jellied cranberry sauce guy. Like, yeah, the, the a lot of people I are. It, I want it straight out of the can. You I want the ribs on it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Rib for my pleasure. Um, I want to. I want to be able to. I want to be able to cut that thing like uh, just into slices and throw it on a, a Hawaiian roll with a piece of turkey and the the dressing. You know, make a little sandwich out of that. Yeah. Thing. Oh, I, I dude. I, I saw them. somebody the other day that took and they did like um. They took a. Uh, I think they might have taken turkey and they did it like I was talking about with the ham. And yep. a thin sliced moist turkey, put like mashed potatoes, stuffing, <laughs> dressed in it. Y'all, you, you, you no, no, people listen. out of control, man. You got to rolled it up. Using meat tortillas. <laughs> they rolled it up. They rolled it up and they sliced it like sushi. Yeah, they sliced it. They rolled it up and they chilled it and they sliced it like sushi. And they right? made like Thanksgiving sushi out of it. No, I, I that's too much, man. That's too I, much. I don't know, man. It it, it intrigues um, me. Now, I will say too, I'm a I, you know this about me. Not many people on this podcast, uh, but I will I'll just out myself. I'm a next day food person. Okay? You're just you're just a cold food guy. I, I am. I am. I'm a cold food person. <laughs> so I, I like to cook the food, stick it in the fridge, eat it later. That's, I think the flavor redistributes itself. It gets more intense. That's just my personal opinion. So this day after Thanksgiving is really my favorite day. Okay. Um, at my granny's house, she does the cornbread dressing. And dude, I will go over there and I will slice a piece off and I will eat it like a, like a popsicle. Like a whole I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, like I got it in my hand and I'm just, you know, just taking You, you peel off. the tinfoil back off the gravy and just dip it in there and yeah, eat it. I don't, I don't even need anything else. You know, yeah. I just walked around all day, like, you know, eating it like a beef stick, like, <laughs> but yeah. um, no, it's, I, I am, I am definitely that guy by the time, honestly, by the time the meal has come around, uh, like we were talking about, I've eaten all the deviled eggs. I've eaten all the stuff I've picked around enough that I'm really not that hungry. 
um, you know, someone will mistakenly bring a crudite. And so I'll dip a couple of carrots and some ranch dressing probably. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't necessarily eat Thanksgiving at Thanksgiving, but the day after one of my favorite days of uh, noshing in the world. Real quick. Um, what's something that, you know, you brought up the, the, uh, the, the veggie plate. Okay. What, is there anything else that pops up at Thanksgiving for you every year that you're like, this does not belong. Mm, I don't know that I wouldn't say don't belong. Like, I mean, I don't. Somebody eat- always brings fried chicken for us. I don't uh, even know who does it. It's the laziest. It's the laziest person in your family. It's do I do I, gra- do, yeah. we, do I grab <laughs> yeah. a chicken thigh? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you're going to eat that. You're yeah. going to do that. But it's also the laziest person. It's it's the, you know, somebody who doesn't really want to contribute anything. I, I, but I, I, I think they fry it up. I think no, they actually they, cook it. I no, think they, they do. Don't. I think they do. No, they went to the gas station and they got the Chester fried. I don't think so. It's good. It's too good. Well, if, if it's that good, then I'm not even complaining about it. No, I'm not complaining uh, about it. I'm just kind of like, where did the fried chicken come Dylan from? Dylan Brooks mentions green bean casserole over here. And what I will tell you, <laughs> this is a very weird, this is a, a strange thing. I've never had it. I don't know what it tastes like. Disgusting. I've, I've never been into green bean casserole. Uh, I've never been to a my family's never served it. It's not like a canonical thing in our Thanksgiving. So I, it's just not something I've ever messed with. Hey, Palmer, pop on here and tell us what you think of green bean casserole. I need to know. You know he loves it because oh. it's light on seasoning. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's all right. Make it with a little cream of mushroom soup. What's, what, so what's going on at the Palmer Tom's Thanksgiving? Tell me. You're that. going to Sperry's, buddy? No. Nah. <laughs> okay. We have done that before. But. Um, what are you looking forward to at Thanksgiving, Palmer? Mm, family. Your, your mom's a bad cook, is what sausage pie. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, 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 do, we do it up. We do it up big more for we do it up big more for Christmas than we do Thanksgiving, just because it's such an in and out holiday. You know, me having to go back on on Wednesday, and then back to you know Athens or Atlanta on that Friday and my brother's in school. So in and out, um, but we do it up big for Christmas. Dylan yeah, Brooks says Palmer goes to Cracker Barrel and calls it a day. And hey, uh, maybe the, I'm addressed. I wouldn't be too shabby. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, now, hey, we, hey, if we would, we would do Shoney's though. Right, Jake? Yeah. Yeah, we do some we, Shoney's. We did you not, know what I do to a Shoney's. Yeah, I know what you'll do to some Shoney's. We'll fuck up no, some Shoney's. We did not touch on this though, really. But what's the goat? Like, what's the thing you look forward to most? Is it the corn, the cornbread dressing, bro? Yeah, hundred percent. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I'm a thousand. Okay, percent. So, so there's like a sweet potato casserole that is incredible, and yeah, okay. it, it's more of a dessert than it is. Yeah, I know people love it. I just I have never got down with it. and all. I Palmer, mean, Palmer just looking to, forward to his mom's dry ass turkey every year. No, so, no. <laughs> Palmer, have you ever had cornbread dressing? No. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you some. I'm gonna make you Ooh, some. Don't, some. Don't, don't tempt me. I'm gonna make you some. I swear to God, I'll make you. I'll make some cornbread dress. Maybe I'll make you a pan that you can take home for for the car ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may you may eat it before you get home. <laughs> Put it in a cake bowl, <laughs> like like it's crackling oat bread. Um. All right. Let's not let these people get out of here. All right. we're, we're, just, we're just rambling on, probably making a lot of people. I mean, I, I ate a big dinner. I had like, a, I had two bowls of that veggie soup that I cooked and uh, a grilled cheese sandwich. I was I'm just glad to see you're okay. You, you, yeah, you're I'm, okay. I am alive. Yeah, um, you're back. You're back. So I ran a fever for like three days. Uh, hadn't ran one in like 20 years, uh, but uh, I'm good. A little, uh, still coughing a little bit, but uh, I will make it. Um, all right, as Ruth said, we will not be back happy next Monday from uh, Bark After Dark. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving from Bark After Dark. We'll both be traveling. Um, we'll be, you know, it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, we'll be back with you here on this channel Wednesday night for mm-hmm. uh, the Georgia Show, eight p.m. I will be back here, and then uh, we will also uh, be pregame show, postgame show, all of that stuff from Knoxville. Until then, I'm Jake Rowe. He's Jake Roos. Uh, hopefully, he did not get uh, eaten by his microwave. Uh, And uh, y'all take care.